This video is sponsored by Keeps. All right, man. The Phoenix Suns, they just made their first NBA Finals since 1993. And with the current state of the Eastern Conference right now, it's, it's their championship to lose. Now, last year, I made a whole video about the Miami Heat and how they pretty much did the impossible making the NBA Finals. And this Suns team, it gives me the same vibe, just in a little bit of a different way. They're like the team that has maybe quote unquote the best good karma collectively that I've ever seen. And that's exactly what this video is about. Now, before we get into this video and trust me, you're going to want to hear some of these stories. I want to shout out today's video sponsor, always looking out for the channel, Keeps. Now, I know most of the people watching my channel are guys. And if you're around my age, I'm about to be 24. You should at least listen up. The studies say two out of every three guys, we're going to experience some form of male pattern baldness by the age of 35. That's that's not as far as you think. The best way to approach a problem like this is to get on it early and stop it before it goes crazy. Keeps, they actually offer a licensed doctor that will look at your information online and recommend the right treatment plan specifically for your head. Then after all that stuff is sorted out, they ship your medication to your front door every three months. You, you don't even got to leave the house, bro. Also with their doctors, they give you 24 seven access to message them and keep in touch. And y'all know that that would be pretty clutch. Lastly, they offer generic versions of their FDA approved medications, which ultimately makes their products a lot more affordable. If you care about your hair like I do, visit keeps.com slash swish out or just click the link in my description. They're giving y'all 50% off, half off your first order, so you, you really can't beat that. Big shout out to Keeps for always looking out for the channel and specifically my guys' hair. <sighs> now let's get into this video. Chris, uh, will the Clippers be back here Sunday playing the game seven? What? <laughs> your feeling about, you know, your level of confidence that you'll be back here again. What you think? For I'm on the team. What you want me to say? No, nah, it's over. I, just, I mean, that's what you want to hear? Yes. That's, come on, man. You've been doing this long enough. I, I have not heard him speak of winning a championship now in a couple of years. I think he's fallen into this assist to turnover ratio thing where, you know, Chris is a very safe player right now. I put the Isaiah Thomas clip in there not to say some dumb stuff about an agent bad or critique his analysis because at that specific time, that was the reality of CP3's career. When Chris Paul played for the Clippers, I feel like this man struggled to win so much because it was just way too much Chris Paul. Even though on paper, you know, it looked like they had a loaded team specifically because of their interior presence with DeAndre Jordan and Blake Griffin. But their wings with J.J. Redick, Danny Granger, Hito Turkoglu, Karan Butler, they were always subpar, which ultimately meant Chris Paul had to do everything. And when I say subpar, I mean these players, they were either out of their primes or they can only do one specific one dimensional ass role, which meant Chris Paul had to run the pick and roll, set up the offense, pretty much do everything to get the offense going. I think Chris Paul, he's always been best as we've seen when he shares a backcourt, when he can kind of take a break. And he's even said this, like on the Clippers, he had way too much responsibility. This is why it works so well with James Harden and Devin Booker. Also, this is another reason why I feel like David Stern, rest in peace, he messed up that trade in 2011. I feel like if Chris Paul was on that Lakers team with Kobe Bryant and Dwight Howard in the pick and roll, bro, that team would have been unstoppable. Nevertheless, after multiple countless years of him falling just short because of injuries, whether it be him or his teammates, I made a whole video about this a month ago, he finally has the break on his side. And also, the team he could never even make the Western Conference Finals with, he meets them in the Western Conference Finals in their first Western Conference Finals, and he beats them for a chance to get to the Finals. Man, that's a lot of damn Finals, but y'all know what I mean. Devin Booker's career, even though it's very early, similar to Chris Paul, it can be defined as patience and good ass karma. I remember making a video last season about players that's pretty much wasting their primes on one team and obviously Devin Booker was on that list. This is a guy that in his first four seasons, 
he couldn't even win 25 games. 25 games he couldn't even win. So now in his first playoff appearance, he's in the NBA Finals and he has a great chance to possibly win. Also, DeAndre Aiden. Bro, he's finally looking like that number one pick that Phoenix hoped and prayed he would be, especially picking him over Luka, and he's finally doing it. And all it took was a Chris Paul to make what looked to be an average pick turn into gold. DeAndre Ayton, to me, he's truly the perfect center to play for a team that's built like Phoenix. A team that already has playmakers in the backcourt and a decent amount of shooters around him, which ultimately complements what he does best. He's very low maintenance, but he does what he does great. This isn't like a knock on Joel Embiid or, you know, Jokic or Carl Anthony Towns, but they're like high maintenance bigs. And what I mean by that, they need the ball. They need space. They need opportunities to really work and be the stars we know they are. DeAndre don't need none of that. Like that, that's what makes him so perfect. You don't got to force feed him the ball 10 to 15 times while everybody else just stares at him and all that stuff. Like, you, you don't got to do none of that. He has just enough skill to be effective around the rim. He's athletic enough to play against a small ball offensive lineup, as we just seen with the Clippers. And his chemistry he's developed with that backcourt, plus his athletic size and height, he, he's going to be a headache. It was real easy to kind of laugh at that number one pick being picked over Luka Doncic or maybe even a Trey Young or anything like that. But he's perfect for that Phoenix team, and he's on pace to be the first number one pick to win a championship this early in his career since Tim Duncan. That's pretty great company. I've told you guys this multiple times, and I'll just say it again really quickly for the video. In the 2018 draft, the Phoenix Suns, they absolutely perfected the first round. Like, they got it perfect. After, you know, drafting DeAndre eight number one, they got blessed with a draft day trade, getting Mikael Bridges for Zaire Smith from Philadelphia. A player that's one from the Philadelphia area. He played high school, college, middle school, all that stuff. Played college at Villanova, won the championship right in front of your face. And his mom worked for the organization, yet you traded this man to the Phoenix Suns. And you needed him, a 3 and D guy that spread the floor when you needed it. You traded him away for Zaire Smith. That, that's tough. Sticking with the 76ers, and I swear I'm not trying to pick on Philly or anything like that. Even though Dario Saric, he really hasn't had much of a role this postseason, he's in the NBA Finals. The two players that Philly traded for each other, Dario Saric and Jimmy Butler, they both, one left and two, made the finals consecutively back to back after leaving Philly. Also, Cameron Payne. This is a player that went from pretty much being like a mascot for Russell Westbrook to now being in the NBA Finals and being a big reason why. Kind of ironic that both Russell Westbrook's backups, they were competing against each other and balling for a chance to make the NBA Finals. That's, that's kind of weird. I wonder how Russell felt watching that. After Cameron Payne's first stint in OKC, where he pretty much did nothing but hit them folks and all that stuff, he gets included in a trade package and ends up in Chicago. Now, I know you guys have all heard what that scout said about Cameron Payne in his first practice with Chicago and all that. And if you haven't, well, you, you're looking at it now. Jay Crowder. He's a player that's been all over the league and all that, and he's found himself on some pretty decent spots. But I never feel like he's been on that team where we thought like they're gonna actually win it all. Like he's never been in that situation. Ironically enough, most of the time, he hasn't been in that spot specifically because of one man. 2015, getting swept by this man in the first round. 2017, basically getting gentlemen swept by this man in the Eastern Conference Finals. 2018, getting blue ball by him, thinking he was your mans and all that stuff. Then he shipped your ass all the way to Utah. Then in 2020, after finally fighting and clawing your ass back to relevance, finally finding yourself on a team that we actually watch, you meet this man in the NBA Finals, and he pretty much just toys with you, bro. Before this playoffs, this man was 4-12 and in his playoff career against LeBron, and LeBron had fun against him. But this year, the tables finally turned. After, you know, in the first three games playing terrible, like in the first three games they fell down 2-1 and he was playing trash, he actually had a great game in game six, and in the last three games, he played great and actually knocked LeBron out, salsa dancing and all that, so he, he got the last laugh. And last, but certainly not least, I want to talk about the Phoenix Suns head coach, Monty Williams, and you, you have to hear this one. This season, after completely turning the Suns from a subpar to terrible team in the past to now a championship contending team in the West, 
he didn't even win the coach of the year. Now, I'm not too mad about that because him and Coach Thibodeau, they had great arguments. And I did give it to Tibbs because I think he had a harder degree of difficulty because he had less talent. So I ain't too mad about that. But more importantly, Monty Williams' story and the stuff he's been through alone in just the last 10 years on and off the court. Bro, it, it's just amazing. First of all, let's start with the on the court stuff. He gets a job as the Hornets head coach in 2011, where he coached Chris Paul and they won 10 more games than a year prior and they made the playoffs. That's pretty great, especially for a rookie head coach. Then he goes from coaching a team that had Chris Paul, the best point guard in the NBA and a top 10 player easily in the league, to coaching a team that had Eric Gordon because Chris Paul got traded. Obviously, losing the best player on your team and a top 10 player in the league, that's gonna make your team's record take a significant hit so you really can't blame Monty. Then to make matters worse, the player you got for CP3 in the trade, Eric Gordon, he only plays nine games and he's out with a knee injury, so your team, it really takes a hit. So now you go from your best player being Chris Paul to now being Jared Jack, which ultimately results in you getting the number one pick, which was Anthony Davis. So now the following season, even though Eric Gordon after that injury, he was never the same player that we seen with the Clippers and you had a rookie Anthony Davis, your team still gets better. Then the next season, I'm just trying to show all y'all how unfair his opportunity really was. You get Drew Holiday and you, you know, you win more games still well below 500, but you got to understand where the West was at that specific time. The Phoenix Suns won 48 games and still didn't make the playoffs. That's how loaded the West was. So it, it really wasn't his fault. Then his last season. Kevin Durant gets injured and Russell Westbrook is pretty much doing everything by himself and the Pelicans, they just inch by Russell Westbrook and make the eighth seed. Then in the playoffs, in the first round, they meet a juggernaut out west. Drew Holiday gets injured, his best perimeter defender. So he's playing a team that won 67 games with the MVP without his best perimeter defender and they lose. No shame in that. Then he gets fired. Then in 2016. Monty Williams, his wife, tragically passes in a car accident with three of his kids in the car. That's traumatic as hell. And this man still has enough love and passion in his heart to forgive the person that did it, even though she was an addict. Everything this man is getting right now, he deserves. Everything Chris Paul is getting right now, he deserves. Jay Crowder, Cameron uh, Payne, Devin Brooker, DeAndre Ayton, all of them, they deserve this. This is why everybody, I feel like all the NBA fans collectively, we're rooting for the Suns. If you weren't rooting for them before this video, you probably are now. If you guys like this video, make sure you guys like this video. I had to drop this because these stories, I mean, it, it's just amazing, especially Monty Williamson. So, um, yeah. Like I said, man, follow my social media sites, turn on post notifications, do all that great stuff, guys. And until next time, as always, stay tuned.